Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series where we're going to take a look and review every single Capcom CP, CP System Dash, CPS2, and CPS3 game ever made. Today we're taking a look at Carrier Air Wing, which is basically the spiritual successor to UN Squadron. But while I'm picking my ship, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, it definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down there as well. But Carrier Air Wing is another awesome shmup for the Capcom CP system. We've already covered 1941 of vertical shmup and this is going to be our first horizontal one and i do really appreciate this game because it is wholly different compared to a lot of the other shmups on the system and you'll see right at the start we're able to select different weapons or power-ups and you're going to see that you're going to be able to collect money throughout the game and purchase different upgrades which is interesting because normally i think the military doesn't charge you for the equipment on your plane when you're in there but of course for a video game mechanic it makes perfect sense now, the question I always have to ask myself is what do I prefer, vertical shmups or horizontal shmups? And I would definitely say that I'm more in the vertical shmup camp. But as far as horizontal ones are concerned, Carrier Air Wing is an awesome option. And just like 1941, which we've already talked about, this game is definitely going to be a fair shmup. So if you want to learn how to get into the genre, if you're looking for maybe a little bit more relaxed experience, something that's not going to be killing you every 10 seconds, it's definitely an awesome option. And graphically, I do really like the horizontal format even if I don't love it from a gameplay perspective as much as vertical because you get to go up and down into the clouds and it just has a really nice look you'll see we're coming in from sea and going over land and clearly there's some sort of battle going on because a lot of the buildings are on fire and I love just how they play with depth and perspective in this game it definitely looks like the ground below you is receding into the background into that vanishing point and I think the artist did a really good job of portraying a lot of the small details of warfare like all those buildings down there that are on fire just a really interesting look and as far as the sprites are concerned you get a lot of really big ones on the screen and slow down again is definitely to a minimum when you're playing this it's just one of those games where you're going to have a ton of fun and if you take a death it is definitely going to be your fault it's not that the game's trying to beat you up but you'll see here that we finished the first mission and we're going to get that money bonus. And you'll see as we go into the transition here, this is where we can kind of think about what we want to set up for the next stage. Because this game definitely does have a lot of strategy in which weapons you upgrade, which, you know, different special weapons you choose. And you're going to get the next mission and it's going to tell you what the target's weak point is. And the selection of the weapons that you choose is going to make it easier or harder on yourself. Because what I 100% recommend when you're playing this game use your special weapons only for the boss you can get through much pretty much every stage with just your standard shot but if you save those specials up to when you get to the boss you're going to be able to unload on them and defeat them so much quicker than if you just actually had to use your standard shot and i really appreciate too kind of the way this game drags you through the story as far as environmental storytelling is concerned. The first stage we were high above the ground and we were basically traversing over ground from you know 15, 20, 30,000 feet in the air. Everything looks small. Now we're really down at street level and obviously fighter jets don't move this slowly so there's a little suspension of belief here but I like how much more intimate this stage is and it does a great job of mixing up its environments and the way you play because now we're definitely moving slower. We have to navigate the environment a little bit more we need to worry about what path we're taking and that was not a concern in the first stage you'll see here the game slows down even more and we're now going through a building i mean obviously maybe if this was a harrier jump shot it could pull it off but there's a lot of you know gameplay elements in here that aren't realistic but from a you know just gameplay perspective mixing the stages up and mixing the play styles up really does a lot to make this feel super special i mean granted i don't suggest that you shoot through buildings to try to make a path for yourself in real life but it's a really fun mechanic in the game you'll see that the girder has a little bit of damage and you know where you need to shoot through to be able to not die by hitting the building and i just really love that detail but the music and the soundtrack are great too and i'll let you listen to those in about 30 seconds after this stage because that's a really fun thing about this game is that it has this really kind of i don't want to call it a rip off but a top gun vibe that really like guitar synth riff that makes you think of you know that top gun generation era of movie but again, it has the same low health warning beep that a lot of the other Capcom CP system games have in them. And God, do I wish that that wasn't true. But you'll see here, like I said, save up your specials and just start unloading them on the boss. And the fight is going to be going a lot quicker than if you just had to use your standard shot. You'll see here, I have already defeated him. But like I said, just save them up and it's going to make it easier to play the game. 
And again, with the little intercut storytelling, we're going to be refueling, we're going to be able to select our weapons, and we're going to move on to the next stage. But I just love how this game moves you from one section to the other. But like I mentioned, the sound effects and the music are quite good, so enjoy listening to those for about a minute. I'll come back and tell you more about why Carrier Airwing is an awesome game, and if you've never played it, you should. But enjoy. just love that synthiness of the soundtrack it kind of feels like you're playing the soundtrack from an 80s you know war movie that never actually came out but as we move on further into the stage i like that we even get a little bit of the color gradient change showing we've gone from daytime to maybe more of the sunset aspect to it and they've just done a great job at capcom the developers of making this game really visually interesting and putting so many details in it even that wake that's coming up over the ship there how it undulates and moves up and down and kind of changes a little color to show the you know white frothiness of the top of the waves i just really enjoy everything about it and again we're onto a boss and it's just totally different than the last boss and I like that they really mix up the mechanics here we're gonna be moving forward and backwards and now we're worried about projectiles that are coming in both directions so it just starts getting a little bit more difficult as you move on but I would say that this is definitely another fair shmup Capcom never made shmups that were gonna just totally destroy you and take all of your quarters they made a game that was challenging and unique without being too bad You'll see here now that we have more money, we're able to select another weapon and it's going to be even more useful for the next stage. And that's what you really learn as you play this game more than once is that your weapon selections are going to kind of inform how easy or how hard the next boss coming up is going to be. But now we've moved into this really snowy winter scape. And again, everything looks great. They even have scale to the tree. So it looks like there's a little path receding into the background. The parallax scrolling is great. The trees are moving faster than those mountains, which in real life they definitely would. You know, the developers and the artists of this game really understood how to use that art to simulate how you would actually see something with your eye as it moves around. And that's why I really wanted to cover every single game on all of these platforms because so many of them are such great respected releases and some, you know, of the top 10 games of all time list occupants for these sort of genres and capcom was just on an absolute roll in the 90s in the arcades and i mean they still make incredible games now of all genres but i feel like if you grew up in the 90s if you went to arcades in the 90s capcom was one of the companies that you just constantly saw their games on the floor and you knew when you saw that capcom logo it was going to be a fun game to play it was a safe bet to put your quarters into but I love now that we're into this factory here too. We get a lot of that scrolling through the background and the lights come up and down as the explosions go on around you. It's just another really fun look to this game. And I really like the fact that they've done as much as they possibly can to make each stage feel diverse and different. But short of that, that is Carrier Airwing. If you've never played the game before, I 100% absolutely recommend you check it out. I'm playing it on the Mr. FPGA, but you can definitely get this on collection. You can emulate it however you play it. If you've never done it before, you certainly should check it out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I love chatting with you guys. Like I mentioned earlier, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe and that notification bell definitely helps us out. But I will be back next week with another game in this series. And we have like 46 more weeks to go. So don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. As long as you guys keep watching them, I will keep making them. And honestly, when this goes live, I probably already got like 25 uploaded anyway. So trust me, they're going to keep coming. But if you're into shmups, if you like horizontal shmups more than vertical shmups, it's definitely a game that I recommend you check out. I'm probably about halfway through the game right now, so there's a lot that I haven't shown you. But short of that, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week. I've died, and I can finally stop listening to that annoying warning bell. I really hate that thing. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.